The first blue plaque was installed in London in 1867 and since then there's been thousands installed worldwide and the purpose of the plaques is to connect famous and notable people with buildings and locations that have an important association with them. A bit like this one here where some famous writer used to live. From rock stars, great world leaders, artists and writers. If you've done anything notable with your life, like invented a light bulb or stabbed women in the shower, then there's probably a blue plaque dedicated to you somewhere, just so long as you're dead. Here is our top five LGBT names from the UK's blue plaques. Number five, Frankie Howard, stage and TV comedian. Frankie was a well-loved comic who started his career while serving in World War II, where he also shone with his stage performances to entertain the troops, even though he suffered from stage fright. His long career switched between stage, TV and screen, where he found his niche as a comedian with his risque sexual innuendos. The most wonderful thing has happened to me. Has it really? I feel a different person. Well, it's better than sticking to one, isn't it? <laughs> Although Frankie was often portrayed as a bit of a ladies' man, of course he was secretly gay. Apparently highly promiscuous, but never coming out during his professional career. Number four, Kenneth Williams, screen actor. Kenneth was of course best known for his long career in the Carry On films, appearing in more than any other cast member. And fling and in and fling. <laughs> Where you could always guarantee Kenneth camping things up big time. Kenneth had limited stage success, which frustrated him greatly as he'd always dreamed of becoming a serious actor. Nevertheless, he did and still does make audiences laugh with his outrageous and entertaining characters. Kenneth kept private diaries all of his life, which after his death in 1988 were discovered to reveal all his secret homosexual shenanigans and lifelong professional frustrations. The most notable being his anger at being paid so little for appearances in all those carry-on films. Beware the Ides of March! Oh, shut up, you silly old faggot. Don't you dare beat my daddy like that! Number three, Virginia Woolf. This prolific author rose to fame during the interwar years and in her lifetime published over 500 essays and 10 novels, her most notable being Orlando, which was turned into an award-winning film in 1992, starring Tilda Swinton and gay legend and social commentator Quinton Crisp. Although Virginia was married, she was known to have formed close relationships with a number of women, the most talked about and intimate being with poet Vita Sackville West. Despite the huge respect and fame Virginia enjoyed in her own lifetime, mental health issues and depression plagued her well-being. It culminated in a sad suicide in 1941, when she drowned herself in a river. Now you wouldn't think that the wall of a block of flats on a council estate in South London will be a place to find a blue plaque. Well, clearly there is one, and it has very strong connections to global LGBT rights. Number two, Peter Tatchell, human rights campaigner. And, ironically, he's one of the few people, if any, with a blue plaque who are actually still alive. If you don't believe us, here's fellow gay rights campaigner Sir Ian Gandalf McKellen unveiling Peter's plaque in 2010. Local residents were so adamant Peter should receive a plaque in his lifetime, they set up their own campaign and won. For LGBT human rights. Mr. Tatchell has lost count of how many times he's been beaten up, battered and arrested in his efforts to change laws and legislations against LGBT people suffering around the world. Number one, Alan Turing, mathematician and computer pioneer. It goes without saying that gay hero Alan Turing bags the top spot and well deserves it. This one-man genius built the first programmable computer which unlocked the secret code of the German Enigma machine in the Second World War. Alan's life and work was so secret that his story wasn't published until the 1980s. Sadly, after the war, which Alan's work helped shorten, he was prosecuted by police for his homosexuality, promptly chemically castrated, which resulted in Alan's sad suicide a number of years later in 1954. Maybe one day the descendants of Alan's machines will get some revenge for his untimely end and wreak revenge on humanity, including the Academy, for not giving the movie about his life the imitation game, best film at this year's Oscars. It's certainly encouraging to see so many LGBT personalities with plaques dedicated to them. 
But I guess if blue is a bit conservative for you, then there was the campaign in Brighton in 2006 to introduce pink ones.